What is going on Cardano friends? Welcome to the YouTube channel. My name is Farid and this is the Cardano Scoop. Now, as a part of today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys some updates about the Cardano blockchain, which will include a recap of Scott Fest and the Cardano Summit, which, ju which just took place last week. I'm also going to be talking about the official launch of Indigo on the Cardano mainnet, as well as the recent launch of the Liquid Testnet on the blockchain. Now, if it's your first time here in the Cardano Scoop series, my goal is going to be to provide you in the Cardano community with the latest news, tutorials and reviews when it comes to the top projects within the ecosystem. And so if these types of videos interest you, make sure to tap that like button. If it's your first time visiting the channel, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions or comments throughout the video, then make sure to leave a comment down below. Jumping into the very first topic, which is going to be a quick recap of Scott Fest and the Cardano Summit. Um, I'm going to be talking about some of their highlights. And so if you guys missed it, Scott Fest took place between November 18th and the 19th in Scotland, in which we saw presentations from IOG, as well as representatives directly from the University of Edinburgh. Now, I do have a fully dedicated video, which I'm going to be leaving the link to down in the description. Um, which is going to go over these articles um, in a lot more detail, being that this did occur um, a few days ago, right? And so Input Output Global or IOG, the main developers behind Cardano, has announced that they funded the research hub at the University of Edinburgh a total of $4.5 million. Now, this hub is going to allow for university students and researchers to propose new projects for the technology, driving greater industry wide focus on the fundamental research and allowing researchers who work outside of the tech space to explore its capabilities more easily. This also follows the successful funding and launch of the blockchain research hub at Stanford University, which took place in August of this year in which we saw IOG CEO Charles Hoskinson donate $20 million to establish the Hoskinson Center for Formal Mathematics at the Carnegie Mellon University in Pennsylvania. So it looks like IOG is continuing to expand its outreach into the traditional world, again, supporting these different universities in the adoption of blockchain. The second major announcement that we saw coming out of Scott Fest was the announcement of USDA, which is going to be a fiat backed or USD backed stablecoin coming into the Cardano ecosystem. And so Emergo, who is the official commercial arm and the founding entity of the Cardano blockchain, has announced the planned launch of its new US dollar backed stablecoin, also known as USDA. USDA is going to be the first fully fiat backed regulatory compliant stablecoin coming into Cardano. And so again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to cover the entire article here, but I will leave the link to it down in the description below. And so again, another really huge opportunity for us to see some DeFi and additional TVL roll into the Cardano ecosystem. Now, later in this video, I do want to talk to you guys a little bit about Indigo and their recent launch of their synthetic stablecoin called IUSD. Moving right along during Scott Fest, we also saw the announcement of Midnight being developed by IOHK. Midnight will be a data protection based blockchain that safeguards sensitive commercial and personal data, protecting fundamental freedoms of association, commerce and expression for developers, companies and individuals. Again, if you guys want to find out more about Midnight, I'm going to leave the link to the official website down in the description below. And we should be seeing more information roll out about this directly from IOHK over the course of the next coming months. Now, they have yet to give us a hard date as to when they plan on launching this. But if we're um, going to see anything like we've seen before, this will probably be going to the preview and the pre prod test nets. Well, the community will have an opportunity to kind of play around with it before seeing it launch on the main net. Now, one thing I want to highlight here is that they will be starting off with the ability to program on midnight using TypeScript, which is going to be a much friendlier language than Haskell, which is what's currently being used for development on the Cardano blockchain. Moving over into some of the updates that were just released as a part of the Cardano Summit, I want to talk about Cody. Now, the Cardano Summit took place in Lausanne, Switzerland from um, November 19th through the 21st. And what I want to highlight here is going to be the release or the upcoming release of the Jet stablecoin. Now, if you guys have not heard of Jed before, they're going to be an algorithmically backed stablecoin, which is going to be slightly different than a fiat backed stablecoin like we just talked about in USDA. And so quickly covering this article here, 
As just announced by Shahaf Bar Jeffin on the main stage at the Cardano Summit, we are thrilled to share that Jed, Cardano's over collateralized algorithmic stablecoin, will be live on mainnet this January of 2023 following a successful full audit. Here we have a picture of Shahaf down below presenting at the actual summit. And it continues to read here, Jed going to public mainnet is a great achievement following a lot of hard work from IOG and Cody. Not only do we need a stable coin, but we need one that is decentralized and has an on-chain proof of reserves. Now Jed is just that, and I see it as becoming the top stable coin on Cardano. Considering all of the integration, partnerships already signed for it, said Shahaf Barjefin, Cody CEO. As security and stability remains on everyone's top priority, especially in times like this, we've been very prudent in the release approach, making sure a thorough audit takes place and other rigorous stress tests prior to launching on mainnet. We will also adopt a gradual and slow approach to providing ADA liquidity to the Jet Smart contract to make sure we pace ourselves and grow carefully. Following the release of Jet on the mainnet, JED will be integrated with top selected partners indexes out of the 40 current ongoing partnerships that they've already signed to enable its proper utilization. These DEXs will offer increased rewards to those who provide liquidity using JED. So it looks like if you are a liquidity provider and you're looking to take advantage of the launch of the JED stablecoin and the platform, you can provide liquidity to any of the partnerships or the partners which are listed here in order to benefit from that launch. Now, moving along in the article here, I believe there's one more section I wanna highlight regarding JetPay, which is gonna be a mobile application supporting the Jet token. Now, we've also announced the development of JetPay, a payment app and crypto gateway that allows merchants, e-commerce platforms, and nonprofit organizations to accept Jet as a form of payment. Now, here's a sneak peek of what JetPay actually looks like. And from what I can tell here, it looks like it's going to be a pretty straightforward payment system in which you can probably load up some JET within your account or maybe your wallet. And then from there, you can send it to anybody else who currently has signed up for JET Pay as well. Now, there are some additional um, paragraphs down here regarding the development of JET and what they plan on actually doing. Again, for the sake of time, I'm not going to highlight all of this here, but I am going to leave the link to this article down in the description below. Moving along, I want to talk about some other updates or some other releases that we heard during the Cardano Summit. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Clay Nation, they're going to be an NFT project on the blockchain. They've currently already um, had their initial mint. However, you can purchase their NFTs on secondary marketplaces. If I'm not mistaken, their main collection is made up of 10,000 NFTs, which are all handmade using Clay. Um, and they actually released a music video um, for Bron and Brawny by Snoop Dogg and Champ Medici, who was actually his son. The Clay Nation team did attend the CNFT Con and Rare Bloom events that, ju that just took place last month. And during those events, they actually had Champ Medici, again, who is one of their ambassadors, show up at the event, give a quick talk, and actually take some photos with the community. So for them to also be highlighting and announcing a brand new music video with Snoop Dogg, which I'm sure many of you are already familiar with, I think is going to bring a lot of attention and eyes to the ecosystem. And so if you guys want to check out this video for yourselves, I am going to leave the link to that um, down in the description below as well. But it is a mix of um, claymation and regular video. And interestingly enough, we actually saw a cameo from uh, Charles Hoskins and I actually think they shot part of this video on his property and so it was really cool to see Charles who again is the face behind Cardano get involved with this particular project. All right next I want to move over and talk about the Cardano Summit NFTs. Now if you guys participated in the Cardano Summit there was three ways that you guys could have done that. The first was by actually participating in person again that was in Lausanne Switzerland for those of you who were not able to participate in person, you could have also participated virtually. Now, if you participated virtually, you would have also had the ability to actually mint an NFT based on the location that you attended at. And so, for example, if I would have attended the 
summit in Brisbane, or for example, in Ivory Coast, I could actually mint an NFT um, for that specific location. In addition to that, you could have also participated by attending virtually um, through the Cardano Summit launch. Now, I actually created a fully dedicated video breaking down that particular version of attendance through the Cardano Summit launch. And if you participated through the Cardano Summit launch, it actually had a nice little um, hidden Easter egg, you could call it. And in order to actually participate in that, you had to basically go around the virtual launch and find a total of seven different, or excuse me, 11 different Cardano coins, which would then grant you access to actually mint the NFT. And so what I wanted to highlight here is just that there's been a lot of trading activity here within the past two to three days in regards to these NFTs. Right now, we have a total of 21,000 NFTs already minted, and I could expect for that to continue rising here again as people actually understand that they can claim their NFTs. And we have a total of 6,100 owners right now and a floor price of about 7 ADA for the cheapest NFTs. Now, I have been taking a closer look at these over the last two days just to kind of get a better idea of what's currently trading and where a lot of the volume is currently at. So in terms of the different um, NFTs themselves, we have the majority of them being for the Cardano Summit Lodge, being that that was probably the easiest way to participate. But as you guys can see here, we also have some additional NFTs from other places such as Delhi, which is in India. We also have some other additions from New York, Calgary, Brisbane, Lausanne, and Vancouver, just to name a few. Now, I believe that there's a total of 52 of them. Um, and being that, a single person would have only been eligible to mint one single NFT. I do think it's going to be very hard um, to actually collect all 52. But if you actually take a look at some of the activity here, you can see that there is a lot of activity and that people do seem to be collecting some of the different um, summit NFTs that could have been uh, earned outside of the launch. Now, one last thing I want to mention here about this NFT collection is that 1% of these NFTs will be a golden version so not only do they have 52 different nfts but one percent of the total nfts minted will be a golden version which i believe will make it that much more valuable and so if you guys are looking to collect some of these um, you can do that through jpeg.store i haven't necessarily checked out some of the other marketplaces such as cnft.io but i would assume that you could purchase some um, from those other marketplaces as well one last thing to also keep in mind is that jpeg.store recently introduced bundles. And so if you're looking to purchase more than one of these at a time, definitely make sure to check out the bundle section here for some pretty cool deals. Now, the very last thing I wanna talk about here in regards to general Cardano updates is going to be the recent increase in terms of TVL that we've just seen within the ecosystem. And so as this article reads here from TradingView, as reported by DeFi Llama, the total value lock or TVL in Cardano increased by a total of 6.5% or 5 million ADA. Now this was over the past few days and the total number of ADA locked in protocols on Cardano, excluding staking protocols, is currently sitting at 171 million total tokens. Now this value is currently the equivalent to about $53 million USD to put this into perspective. According to the same source, the reason for Cardano's TVL increase could be the influx of funds into major DeFi blockchain protocols like MinSwap, Wingriders, and SundaySwap. As noted earlier by you today, a major migration from centralized exchanges occurred as a result of the collapse of the FTX exchange. Investors either exited positions or went into decentralized services such as the Cardano ecosystem. I think this highlights what's been said within the ecosystem for quite a few weeks now, especially since the collapse of FTX, which is that if you are not in control of the keys that control your crypto wallet, that you're not actually in control of those assets within that wallet. So not your keys, not your crypto. Again, a big reminder to move your funds from centralized exchanges over into non-custodial protocols. Now, one other thing that I do think contributed greatly into the TVL increase um, is the actual LBE or liquidity bootstrapping event that just took place for Indigo or the Indigo protocol. 
Next, I want to talk to you guys about the recent conclusion and the launch of the Indigo protocol on the Cardano mainnet. And so it's official, you guys. Cardano officially has a native stablecoin. However, do keep in mind that it's a synthetic stablecoin, which is going to be a little bit different than USDA and JED, which will be coming on the blockchain very shortly. So let me jump back over into the MinSwap DEX, which is where the actual LBE or the liquidity bootstrapping event occurred. Now, in my last video, I talked a little bit about this. And uh, during that process, we're actually in the discovery phase. So that phase has now ended and we're now in the encounter phase in which uh, members who contributed during the discovery phase can now um, convert their Go ADA into the Indy token. So if you participated as a part of that discovery phase and you have yet to convert your tokens, now would be the opportunity for you to do that. Now, do not be worried. Um, unlike the discovery phase, the encounter phase does not have an actual end date. So this should be active forever. Um, and you should have the opportunity to convert your tokens at any time that you wish. Now, in regards to the total amount of um, ADA that was raised, the 350,000 indie tokens that were being distributed raised 3.3 million of the ADA token which is roughly about 1 million US dollars. On the initial launch of the Indy token, it was trading for about 9.5 ADA per token. We saw that briefly hit an all-time high of 12 ADA per tokens. And since then it's retraced a little bit, and I believe it's now trading anywhere between seven or eight ADA per each of the tokens. And so what I wanna do now is quickly jump over into one of the articles here released by the Indigo team on Medium. If you guys are not following them there already, I highly recommend that you do so. They post a lot of really good articles breaking down how the protocol is going to function and what they plan on doing in the future. Now, what I want to highlight here is just going to be how the I assets are stabilized or how their price is maintained. Again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to cover the entire article, but you can use the link down in the description in order to find this. So IUSD is intended to maintain its peg like well-known centralized stable coins, such as USDC, USDT, and TUSD. However, in light of recent events, it's now more important than ever to put trust in decentralized solutions. Again, I think they're really highlighting the crash of the FTX exchange and then the explosion of the Terra Luna stablecoin. Scrolling down into the section about how IUSD maintains its peg, Indigo Protocol introduces to the world I assets, again, which are going to be synthetic assets that track the price of real world assets and digital assets. So if you guys are purchasing synthetic assets such as the IUSD and IBTC, um, do keep in mind that you're not actually owning Bitcoin or the actual dollar. You're just owning a synthetic representation of it, which basically exposes you to the price action of that asset. Now, jumping back in the article here, to maintain its price, Indigo relies on protocol rules to incentivize arbitrageurs to stabilize price. These rules ensure that IUSD and other I assets are always fully collateralized by ADA, giving further confidence to users that IUSD and I asset prices will always match their counterparts. So again, I think they're really doing a good job of educating the community as to some of the risks, but then also some of the countermeasures that the team is taking to make sure that investors in their synthetic assets do not get burnt like we saw with FTX or with the Terra Luna crash. Now, moving over into the actual MinSwap DEX, I want to highlight a few things here. As you guys can see, we now have the ADA in the trading pair, and it's now trading at 6.8 ADA per token. And then right below that, we also have the ADA IUSD token or the trading pair, as well as the ADA IBTC trading pair. And so if you guys are looking to get exposure into some of these I assets, you do not necessarily have to go through the actual Indigo um, platform. And what I mean by that is that you don't actually have to open a brand new position in order to mint or to purchase the IUSD or the IBTC tokens. 
you can actually navigate over to platforms just like we saw right here with MinSwap. Now, the cool thing about purchasing the token from an outright platform just like this is that you can bring it back over into the Indigo protocol. And then from there, you can provide it into the stability pools or the insurance pools that are used to fund any liquidations that occur on the platform. And then as a part of that, um, you'll actually be able to earn some passive um, income using what you're providing into the stability pools. So just another way for you guys to basically invest your ADA, but do make sure to do your own research as there are some inherent risks um, in participating in DeFi. Now I'm just gonna quickly go in here into the ADA Indie trading pair and just kind of show you guys what some of the price action looked like on the actual launch of the token. So I'm gonna switch over to the one hour time frame. And again, as you guys can see here, the, the token did start trading at 9.59 ADA per token immediately right after the LBE. It hit that all time high of about 12 ADA. And then right now um, we've kind of retraced and then we're now sitting at about 6.7 ADA per the token. So that's going to wrap it up there for the updates on the Indigo platform. Again, a huge shout out to that team. Congratulations on what you guys are bringing um, in terms of DeFi to Cardano. Hopefully we can see a lot of these other protocols doing the same thing in terms of launching within the next few months. Now, if you're wondering who else is going to be launching, we do have the likes of Meld, um, who will be launching on the testnet on January 16th. They're going to be a lending and borrowing platform very similar to indigo however they will not be dealing with i assets um, but they will be dealing with fiat so they're going to also be um, allowing not only for crypto to crypto loans but you'll also have the ability to borrow and lend fiat using meld and then there's also liquid they're going to be a lending and borrowing uh, marketplace as well so let me actually share my screen and talk about their recent launch of their testnet now on october excuse me on november 18th we saw the liquid team allow announce the launch of their testnet on the cardano preview network so liquid is going to be cardano's for first algorithmic money market which again is officially live on the preview testnet as the article here reads we're thrilled to open our preview testnet app to the public and our core dev team has been building this relentlessly for 1.5 years in order to achieve this huge milestone now, the Liquid public testnet will include the following features, support for the NAMI, Flint, and Jira wallets, the ability to lend ADA to the Cardano marketplace, and the ability to mint QADA, which is the interest accrual token. Now, you also have the ability to borrow ADA against your QADA, which again is your collateral. And then there's also going to be the ability to toggle between a light and dark mode. And then there's also going to be a low transaction fee to lend and borrow on the platform. In terms of upgrades that we can expect to come to the liquid platform those are all listed here i'm not going to cover all those individually but in summary i'm going to jump over into the app here which i will leave the link to this down in the description once you navigate to the website here you can connect your wallet again the nami wallet the jira wallet and the flint wallets are all currently supported you also have the ability to view the dashboard you will be able to vote as well in terms of governance and then you can stake some of your liquid tokens if you currently do hold that token. Now, right below, we can see the total supply balance um, in terms of what I've currently supplied. I can also see to the right of that what I have also borrowed. Keep in mind, if you're looking to borrow on the platform, you do have to lend first, and then you can use the supply balance as your collateral. Scrolling down here, you can see a quick summary of what you have lent so far to the platform. I would assume that once I have borrowed from the platform, that will be displayed here on the right hand side. So that is going to do it for today's video. Again, we've talked about some of the um, key information that was discussed during Scott Fest and the Cardano Summit. Following that, we quickly talked about Indigo and their recent launch on the Cardano mainnet. And then we just wrapped up by talking about Liquid and their launch on the testnet. If you guys found some of the information covered as a part of today's video to be helpful, then I would really appreciate it if you could tap that like button. It's going to help, it's going to, help to get this content spread out within the Cardano community. If it's your first time visiting the channel, I ask that you consider subscribing. And if you have any questions or comments, then make sure to leave those down below. With that said, I will see you guys in the next video.